Welcome to Life with Beth and Court, where life is always interesting. We sold everything to live on the road full time, despite having zero experience. Now we bring you lessons, laughs, and stories from the road. Buckle in for an entertaining ride. Welcome back to another episode of Life with Beth and Court. I'm Beth. I'm Court. And today we're talking about camper cooking. <laughs> I've been listening to too much country music lately, and it shows because you asked me to name it, and that's what came out of my mouth. Camper cooking. Yeah. There was this song that went, hey, good looking, what you got cooking? Oh, boy. Yeah. I yeah. thought you'd like that. That hurt my that's soul it. a little that's bit. That's all I have. Yeah. Oh, that was the, the only part of the song? That's all you remember? <laughs> that's all I remember. That oh, was enough okay. for me to be like, I don't think this is the kind of music I want to listen to, so... Camper yeah. cooking. Hey, camper cooking. <laughs> so the reason for this episode today is because one thing that I'd never thought about when we first started this adventure was how much our eating habits would change, our grocery shopping habits, our cooking habits. Mm -hmm. But it's a fact of life because we went from a very large kitchen. Mm -hmm. Like our kitchen was actually enormous like we had how many cupboards do you think we had i don't know we used them all but we really didn't like we made sure they <laughs> all didn't. had shit in them but like if you ask how many we actually used it was probably like four or five yeah but also you know people have asked us what do you do like people assume we just eat out all of the time because we don't have storage and so i thought it would be interesting for us to talk about it because they're like well what do you do and where does your food go and how much can you get yes because we went from obviously a full-size house-sized refrigerator had, and freezer we had like the double fridge yeah. like the giant one with the pull-out freezer on the bottom like I feel like if I were to see a real refrigerator right now, I'd be like a little kid staring up at this giant thing. <laughs> yeah. So our refrigerator was huge. Mm -hmm. Obviously, our stovetop was, was huge and it was brand new. So yeah. it really cooked things lickety split. Obviously, we had a full size microwave. Mm -hmm. We had like 180 square feet of counter space. We had a massive kitchen sink that was super deep. We had a dishwasher. We had all sorts of amenities that we no longer have. Yeah. We basically, if we want to just get down to brass tacks, traded in all of that for a mini fridge mm -hmm. on the inside of the camper, mm -hmm. an easy bake oven, mm -hmm. and a microwave that gets confused about its job sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we will say we're very lucky because we have a bonus fridge, which a lot of True. people do not when they're RVing. And we found that out because people would be like staring at us when we'd be outside cooking in our outdoor kitchen they'd be like is that an extra fridge and we'd be like yeah and they're like wow and we realized then it wasn't normal yeah some people just bring their own in the bed of the truck but i feel like that would be very excessive for us yeah and so we've been asked multiple times how do your fridges work when you're traveling and so to answer that question our fridge on the inside has the option to run off of propane or electric and it has an auto switch so when we're plugged in at a campsite it runs off of electricity and when we travel on travel days it automatically switches to propane and pulls the propane from the tanks in the front to stay cool can we just go down memory lane real quick I just had this thought this morning. Oh, Whenever when, you say that, it scares me. <laughs> of when you literally wouldn't let me leave the propane tanks open. Yeah. And you made me open them every time we cooked a meal. Then and close immediately them. close them. Yeah. You made us unpack our entire fridge and put it in a cooler on travel days. Mm -hmm. And you would make us turn off the propane so that if we needed to turn the heat on because it meant it was very cold outside. Yeah. I would have to get dressed and yep. go turn the propane back on so we could heat our camper. I should let my counselor know that is a win in the trust bucket that I allow us to roam around with open <laughs> propane. And I thought you were going to bring up the time I made Albert explain to me on a molecular level how propane works right. in the Home Depot parking lot. I did forget about that, but that was that was gold because you trust Albert. And his yeah. smartness, yeah, more than I would say ninety eight percent of the population, yeah. And you were like, okay, all right, I hear you. And he's explaining like the odds of us actually exploding by leaving the propane tanks open. I tried to tell you many, many times, sweetheart. They were literally designed to do this. I didn't and matter. So, oh, hold so on. hold Let's on. Shoot. During that Ugh. entire conversation with Albert, you were like, okay, okay, I'm feeling better. We get back in the truck and you're like, we're still not leaving them open. 
<laughs> so it like literally got us nowhere. Trust takes time. And I bet there's someone listening right now that they had the same childhood that I did. And it was that you never left propane on. Like as soon as you were done with it on the grill, you turned it off. As soon as you were done using it for something else, you turned it off. So I guarantee there's other people out there with trust issues about propane. But I have evolved in that way. So going back to propane keeping our fridge cool, our outside fridge, it actually does not keep that one cool. Correct. That one only runs off of electric. So if we have groceries out there, which we'll talk about grocery shopping in a minute, we either have to move everything into the main fridge. We never do that. Let's yeah. be honest. Well, yeah. Do we just leave it in there? Yeah, we, we do. do. But okay. It, we typically our travel days now that we're not trying to get some like because in the beginning we had some pretty long travel days. Yeah. We would go four hours, five hours, six hours. But now we only go like 40 minutes, an hour, hour and a half, two hours. So everything in the outside fridge is fine. We typically only have drinks out there, though. So that's true. And it's not like too much is going bad. Yeah. And I think as far as like eating habits. So back home, I felt like it depended. Like everyone goes through phases where you don't want to cook anything. Mm -hmm. You just want to eat out all the time. Like we went through those phases at home and then like we still kind of go through those phases on the road. And we found out we are foodies, apparently. Yeah, Remember? Fair. I forget how we learned this information, but we learned that we're foodies because we love food and we love going to different places and trying, uh, like, local cuisine. And so that was one of the things that we were most excited about with traveling. True. But hashtag COVID. Hashtag fucking COVID. Yeah. Because restaurants are a really good place to spread a lot of droplets and <laughs> I thought you were going to say spread a lot of joy. I was like, where no, are we going? Well, with I mean, this? typically for us it is, but yeah. it's, uh, it's particularly a, a great way to spread germs because everyone takes their masks off to eat. And then yeah. if you laugh, there go droplets all over the place. I don't want anyone's droplets. No, especially because I have no nose hairs. So yeah. it's particularly dangerous for me restaurants are typically a no-go for us we will i would challenge that i think that we don't go as much as we would if covid weren't a thing but we still go out to eat quite a bit but we're either picking it up and bringing it back to the camper right. or we make sure they have outside seating but that's what i mean like yeah. restaurants indoor restaurants like we don't yeah go do that you when... can't soak in the culture all the way right because eating a meal <laughs> a local cuisine in your own camper yeah, it kind of loses a little bit of its charm. Yeah, we actually started watching uh, this YouTube couple called Kara and Nate and they're full time. Well, they're van lifers now. Uh, and we got really sucked into their YouTube channel and they before COVID would show like these amazing meals yeah. <laughs> all over yeah. the world. Like it was just this whole experience watching it. And then we watched one post COVID and they were like, well, we're going to sit here and eat this food in our camper. Not as exciting. And you could like, like, feel the yeah. vibe change. Well, because yeah. they're like they're eating like with takeout stuff. Yeah. It was kind of funny, too, because she's like, well, eating a steak with a plastic knife isn't exactly the same. <laughs> and then he got up and got them a knife because they're yeah. in their home. She's like, oh, yeah, I guess we could do that, too. But it just it loses its charm. And it so does. for us, that's something that we really miss is going out to eat and doing it without being afraid of being <laughs> infected. Yeah. And I think once we're on the other side of COVID, that's something we'll probably do more. I mean, it's been great for our budget, like because yes. I'm worried we would eat out all the time. I definitely would because I don't want to cook way more than you don't want to cook. Yeah. Honestly, like it's not it's rare that it's not about cooking for me. It's more like I'm craving something I shouldn't have or we find like the first thing we do when we get to a new campsite is we look at everything around us yeah. and we always look at food and look at the restaurant. So I'm like, I could cook this or yeah. <laughs> we could do this. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of how eating out goes. Like I would say it was the same as back home. Like if we didn't want to cook or we were craving something or whatever, we would do that. It's just you can't go out to eat anymore. Yeah, and we, like we said, we typically like to try whatever's local to that region or, or try, you know, some of the smaller cafes and whatnot. But one thing oh. we will not try, and we haven't tried, for all of the coastal regions that oh, we've been on. Oh, I know it's coming. We do not like seafood. Yeah, and people. Neither one of us. 
people like don't know what to do with that information. I feel like sometimes they think it's offensive. And (laughs) when we, how dare you? Yeah. When people are like, you have to try this or like, there's this really good seafood. It's taught us. Well, it's taught me to be more mindful when I suggest things because like people are getting so excited about seafood. I'm like, "Mm, yeah, you're, you keep talking, but in my head, you're going to be really sad when at the end of this, I say, Oh, we don't eat seafood. (laughs) They go go, like into detail about what's so good and how perfectly cooked the fish is. And we're like, and we're just like, yeah, we're like, we're patiently waiting till the end. Yeah. A good way I think to handle that would be to ask someone, what kind of foods do you like? And then make a recommendation. We did try Unless I made this up in my head, didn't we try like a gator sausage meatball? You are, in fact, not making that up. Oh, yeah. I probably blocked it out. Your Uncle Ooh. Mike is the one that fed it to us. Yes. I think we only tried one bite each, but it was it was actually like a pork German sausage yeah, mixed, mixed with gator. And he said it was like low on the gator scale, if memory serves me correctly. <laughs> on, on a scale of one to gator, <laughs> it's pretty low on the gator side. Yeah. Yeah. So he, when we stayed in Virginia. We went to uh, your Uncle Mike's house and (laughs) Uncle Mike was in the Air Force for 26 years. He was stationed in Germany for a very long time. And in Germany, he learned to love a lot of the cuisine. So when we went to their house, he made us like a full Full German German meal. meal. Yeah, And part of that, I guess, was gator sausage. I think he might have done that just to mess with us. I'm not really sure. But I was very proud of myself and I declared, I will do this. I declared. But I will not eat seafood. Like, this is where it stops. Mm -hmm. This is where the line is. It's a texture with seafood for me. Yeah. There are, so there are, like, we stayed in Florida for four months and we've been, you know, on the coast. So there's a lot of seafood. Like, Mm -hmm. what did we drive by yesterday? Drive through crabs. And we were like, no. (laughs) Why? Terrible bird. I was like, I will never drive through a crab shack. That is not a thing I just will think be doing. they should have a marketing conversation. With Although, someone. I mean, I guess that one's better than Dick's Wings. Oh, Dick Wings. Was, was it Dick Wings? Wing? No, I think it was Dick's Wings. I think I told Either people way, it was Dick Wings. Yeah. I don't, anyway, want, I don't want any of those. We digress. So as far as eating out, I feel like that's pretty much the same. Maybe even a little less with COVID. As far as like eating habits on the road I feel like sometimes we're really good like we're notorious for on a travel day we wake up we pack everything and then we don't eat and we're starving we're always starving at like 11 30 and I don't know why we never eat or make shit the night before well so in the beginning because we're lax now we're like pros because we've been doing this for eight months <laughs> but I would recommend doing this because this is what we did in the beginning that whatever uh food prep you've done like you prep something for snacks like even if there's chips and crackers you have like lunch meat or Mm. carrots or something otherwise you're tempted to stop and eat bad food and guess where it's going to be from a gas station oh Oh. (laughs) (laughs) well the reality is you're not going to be able to pull through an arby's drive-thru true unless it's attached to a gas station which has happened And yes, we ate the Arby's. But the moral of the story is that you want to prep your food ahead of time because your options are limited when you're on the road Mm -hmm. with a camper. Like you either have to find somewhere to park and then like walk across parking lots or you end up eating some really good gas station pizza. Oh my God, that pizza was so good. That was like the best pizza. Guys, we don't eat gas station pizza. It's uh, It's very bizarre. Travel days like just throw off our equilibrium all the way. Yeah. Because you and I have very strict food uh, habits because y- neither one of us can tolerate dairy or gluten. Well, we can in small ways, but not. But not yeah. gas station pizza no. ways. Like that is something that on a normal day we would be like, absolutely not. But when you're starving, when you're on, a starving day, on a travel yeah. day and you're stopped to get gas and your yeah. your options are a dill pickle in a bag or a piece of pizza. Both. We actually did get both. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually true. Yeah. I it's, just got, I grabbed one of everything and that's not how we eat. And that's not like when you're talking about budget and doing this lifestyle, like it's not sustainable financially not or ideal. for your body. So what you want to do if you are doing a travel day, you want to get in the habit of prepping snacks ahead of time, bringing them with you in the truck. That way you don't 
have to deal with that. And I would recommend doing it the night before because. Yes, not the day of. We always think like, oh, we're going to casually pack everything up and then we'll have an hour and we'll prep our food and then we'll leisurely get in the truck. It's not how it goes. One time we did have time for banana pancakes on a travel day. Yeah, but hold on. That comes with a massive caveat because the, the day that that happened, the night before, you were like, hey, babe, let's have a relaxing morning tomorrow morning so let's take clam hut down now Uh, and i said i don't want to take clam hut down right now i want to leave it up until tomorrow morning Mm -hmm. and you said no let's take it down and i said i do not want to and then you ended up taking it down and trying to move things and be helpful (laughs) you threw your back out ended up face down by our fire pit (laughs) while i packed the rest of it and then the the, and then (laughs) the next morning for our hashtag relaxing travel day morning I made us banana pancakes because I wasn't taking down the clam hut, but I was also putting a heating pad on your back, clearing out the entire back seat of the truck so that you could lay down, giving you medicine, hugging you because you get whiny. Anything else? Do you want to just like detail every <laughs> single moment that happened? No, I'm just saying that like- Do the, you need to get your diary out? The one time that we actually had time to make food, mm-hmm. it still wasn't an ideal day travel day. The other caveat is that when we say banana pancakes, it's a pre-made banana mix that you just add water. So. <laughs> um, it's literally the world's easiest pancakes. Yeah. So as far as like what it looked like back home for cooking and what it looks like now, back home, this is so foreign to me because I feel like we've been in this role for so long. Back home, you did most of the cooking. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I did like, yeah, I can't, I honestly can't even remember it now, but I did like I would say like 95% of the cooking and dishes. Yeah. It's so weird because now it's completely opposite and I can't imagine a time it was different, like when it was backwards. Because back home, I was like, every man for himself, I'm going to eat cereal (laughs) or like, you know what I mean? Or you would cook things. Basically, you would cook so much that when I had to, I was like, no, you just eat something. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so the meal you're making for me is cereal. Okay. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of like how that switch happened I wanted to say like when I went full-time with our business I ended up having more time but I feel like it started before that and I I think for me it's like part of the lifestyle like there's definitely a chill vibe about this lifestyle at least for me and so like I actually enjoy cooking now I enjoy turning on Italian music when I'm making pasta or standing outside and grilling like there was just this change that happened and it's very rare. I think like once a month, maybe I'll be like, I don't feel like cooking your cooking tonight. But other than that, I do most of it now. Well, I think one part though, is that as soon as we went on the road, you stopped working full time. You had a part time gig doing social media and then the other half of it was our business. And then when you went full time with our business, either way, as soon as we hit the road, you no longer had a schedule that was determined by someone else. So, yeah, that's really true. You could take time. You could take an hour in the middle of the day and cook something cool for lunch. Yeah. And, you know, we would use my lunch break for a walk and I would just eat while I worked or whatever. Yeah. So here's something too that is the same. You're about to hear a train in the background and it's really interesting because this campsite is amazing. Like they have beautiful individual shower suites. That's what Mm -hmm. I call them Mm -hmm. where you get like your own toilet and shower and sink and then they have free laundry. Mm -hmm. It's a brand new site and we're like, how can this be? Because it's so affordable. And then the first night we heard the train go through at 2 a.m. We were like, Oh, okay. Not just 2 a.m., but 11 p.m. Yes. And 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. Yeah. It's just all hours of the day. So, it's very unpredictable. So he say it's train time now. It's train o'clock. Like we, hear, we hear the horn, and uh, another camper here told me that the reason they have to sound the horn is because they're crossing through a town, so they have to like make sure everyone knows they're coming. And boy, do they. Yeah. They really do a great job yeah. with that. Anyway, I always cook now, and I actually enjoy it. I think once a month I'm like, you're cooking for us, and you usually make us mac and cheese. <laughs> when it's your turn Mm -hmm. to cook. And so part of being in a camper and getting groceries, first of all, let me say, you get to explore new grocery stores, which if you're a foodie, that's really freaking exciting. I have a very, very deep connection with Publix. (laughs) Deep connection. It was 
my <laughs> home base for four months, and I think it's the best grocery store ever. Mm-hmm. And when we left, we recorded a behind the scenes dashboard confessions for our membership. And Beth was like, Why are you so sad about leaving Florida? Like, what are you going to miss? And the first thing out of my mouth was, I'm going to miss Publix. Yeah. Well, actually, the first thing you were like, Yeah, I- I'm going to miss palm trees. And I was like, <laughs> Babe, we're going to Georgia. There are still palm trees. And she's like, okay, I'm going to miss Publix. Yeah. So we did find out just how deep your affinity for Publix went. Yeah. I, d- I do enjoy Publix quite a bit. I feel like it's it's the in-between family fair and Whole Foods. Yeah. And then there's Whole Foods. So we got to experience all of these really cool grocery stores. But then we very quickly realized we can't just go in and buy everything. We That's a burp. I'm so sorry. <laughs> There it is. Okay. We very quickly realized like you can't just go in and buy everything you want. We did that the first four trips. We did. We did that like it's because Publix is so exciting. They have so many options. We bought one of everything that we could dietarily eat. Yeah. Oh, this is what I was saying earlier. So on that note, one thing that's the same for us at home and the same on the road, we end up throwing food away because it goes bad, which is really fucking weird because you literally have such a small space it's like how does this food go bad i would say it's not as bad as it was back home but we've noticed like if we start to eat out then the things we've purchased and planned to make a meal for go bad yeah that makes sense but also you start making meal plans and that helped us stop wasting food yes because it it hurts our hearts when our food goes bad because that's wasteful and it's terrible for the earth and for other humans and all sorts of things. And so that's something that we wanted to be very intentional about stop wasting food. So you start making meal plans Mm -hmm. so that when we went to the grocery store, there's a very specific list we stuck to. And at home, it actually was better for our nutrition as well, because typically in the middle of the day, Mm -hmm. if you're in the middle of a project, you're like, uh, just give me chips or crackers or something. But when there's a meal plan, you would look at it and say, you're not allowed to have chips. It's carrots time. <laughs> well, I don't say it like that. <laughs> That's true. But, but I, at one point, like, scheduled it because we... So another thing was we were spending so much food on groceries and we were still So throwing, much food on groceries. Um, What was wrong there? We were, we were spending, spending so, so much, much money. money. <laughs> we were spending so much money on groceries and we were still wasting food. So we're like, what the hell is going on? And basically because in, there wasn't a plan, we were just snacking on whatever. We snacked hard. Yeah, we would like live off chips if we had the and then, and then we would like, we would run out of chips. That was the only thing we'd run out of. And we'd be like, why don't we have any food? We got to go to the grocery store. And then we would get to the grocery store and be like, oh, we're basically just out of chips. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, and then realize that we had like a whole fridge full of food that we just yeah. needed to like fucking eat. Yeah. And it's been out of whack since the cockroach situation, which is a whole nother thing we'll discuss at some point, but it cannot be today. I do not have it. Especially in, in the food episode. Yeah. We're not mixing cockroaches in food today, oh. but we had like, we were in a rhythm for a really good long time with the meal plan and the scheduling and the cooking. The other thing is you can't food prep as much. So back Mm -mm. home, when you have a giant ass fridge and freezer, you just food prep and you're like, okay, everything's in here for the week. Well, it doesn't exactly work that way. If you're trying to food prep for two people for four days, like we don't have room for eight meals in the fridge. Exactly. So you can food prep for like two days (laughs) and there's no counter space like we really had to be good with our communication of like sometimes it falls in the same window of time that you'll need to do dishes and I will need to cook and we're like literally touching our bodies together because we're in the same space one thing I love that you did one or two times like you brought in our outdoor table like we just have this Costco table that I guess you would see at like a graduation or something and you brought it in so I could food prep oh is that what it's called yeah oh are you sure yeah I think it's a graduation table (laughs) (laughs) it's definitely just a folding table but you brought it inside and it was so exciting yeah because it gave us a lot of room it was like in the size of the graduation table was literally like one little space that we had back home like back home we had so much counter space and I never utilized it and now I'm like man I would love to have counter space 
It's four foot by two foot. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really what's changed. So to answer the question we get often, do you eat out all the time because you don't have space for your groceries? No, I think we do a good job because we have both fridges of, you know, stocking up as much as we can. And we have, so we went from back home, we had a five shelf pantry plus cupboards. Yeah, we had, honestly, we had like 26 cupboards. But like we did not have to worry about pantry storage. And literally, what are the dimensions you would give that? Oh, I don't know. I would say it's about 10 inches high. Yeah. Maybe a foot and a half in its longest space. I'd say two feet. Oh. No, deep. This? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one side, it's angled. So one side of it's about 10 inches. The other is probably a foot and a half. And Mm -hmm. then it's about probably 10 inches high. So we don't have a whole lot of, we have one of those to put our food in. And we cram everything in there. All our pantry food. Like one of us just shoves everything in and then the other organizes it. And then the other one who shoves it in just gets pissed when she has to cook dinner because it's all like neatly packed away. And I'm like, no, I shoved this spice here because I knew I would need it. We'll let you guess who is who I'm in not that scenario. I'm not going to name names because <laughs> I'm above that. So one development that has come upon us recently because of the incident that shall not be named oh. uh, is that we started cooking outside on a two burner electric burner that we brought with us but we also tried a couple times cooking over the fire we did and we both had a conversation that was our goal like we we wanted to be those campers that we saw where they like cooked over the fire and they made coffee and we it looks so cool we cooked over the fire at aunt Lori's and mm-hmm. uncle kev's and so that was like one of our goals and I don't know why, but I just started <laughs> making morning fires when we were in Georgia. Like I woke it was up, only Georgia. It was only Georgia. <laughs> it was like hot and heavy for a week. I made a fire every morning and tried to make us food. Like I toasted your bagel over it. I made us grilled cheese with tomato soup. Oh my gosh. I, I would kill pizza. for some grilled cheese and tomato like, soup. I don't know what got into me, but I loved waking up every morning making a fire, letting the coals, I would like do my yoga and my meditation and my journaling by the fire. And then once the coals, when it, once it died down to coals, then I would make us food. I even made us coffee outside. Yeah, I think it's because that campsite felt very like nature-y. Yeah, maybe. Because there were like goats roaming and chickens roaming yeah, and we maybe. were on a dirt like our campsite was dirt and yeah. like the one we're on now is beautiful. Yeah. It's brand new, but it's cement. It's a it cement would be slab. Weird to like wake up every, it just doesn't fit the vibe. Here. Yeah. And you're like yeah. right next to your neighbors, which I guess you were in the other site too. I don't know. It just, just making things. It just induced morning fire feelings for you. Yeah. yeah. And so I would like to do that again, but with the cockroach situation, Mm. we used our little electric burner that was in storage for eight months. Thank God we didn't get rid of it. I almost did. And one morning I was like, Bethy Ann, we can cook outside. Like I can cook outside. And man, I must recommend an electric whatever it is, whatever I said it was, because it heats things so much faster. Like I remember the first time I cooked on it, I turned up the knobs to what I normally would. And I walked away and I came back. I was like, shit, like everything's already (laughs) boiling because the propane takes so much longer to heat things. So it's actually really nice when we need to cook something quickly. And that's a vibe too. Like I love cooking outside and having music on and like the sun's starting to set. It's just a whole thing. And so Overall, I would say we're at like a three or four out of 10 cooking outside. I think we'll get there. I would actually say a five out of 10 because we use those little pudgy wudgy things or whatever you call them. Pudgies. Pudgies. Pudgy pie. Pudgy pie. I don't know. (laughs) Um, And we're learning like we have a cast iron. Those are cast iron and we're like learning. So overall, as far as groceries and meals, I would say we probably have it the most dialed in we ever have as far as like. Prior to uh, Operation Cockroach, yes. Oh, God. Yeah, that's derailed us really bad. Really bad, both in our sleep and our eating habits. And then the train came. So we're just, we're we're a real mess right now, you guys. I'm impressed that we've been functioning as well as we needed to on this uh, Me as well. I'm very, yeah. I'm very impressed with us Yeah. based on our lack of sleep and nutritious food. Yeah, so that's food on the road. That's how it goes. That's camper cooking that's for you. That's camper ya. cooking, guys. Hopefully this has been a very informative <laughs> 
episode for you. <laughs> Probably hasn't. <laughs> it's interesting all of the questions we get that we don't necessarily think about people having. Mm -hmm. So it's I think it's fun to hear you guys' questions. So as always, you can find us over on all the social accounts, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at Life with Beth and Court. And now you can find us on the YouTube. Oh, I forgot. Oh. I was not prepared if for whatever that was. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go do that. We have now started our very own YouTube series. We've been working on it for a few months behind the scenes. We have a shit ton of footage. And when we took the footage, we were in the middle of flipping our lives upside down. So it's not the easiest to edit through, but we are getting there and we're super excited to share it with you. Essentially, from the very beginning, we recorded our whole process of transitioning to uh, life on the road, the RV lifestyle. So we are now sharing that with you episode by episode. We released the first episode and you can check it out over on YouTube if you search Life with Beth and Court. And part of that goal is that we are trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Because right. once we get to 1,000 subscribers, we can start making dumb monies off of dumb, dumb YouTubes, monies. which means we can make more for you. So if you could support us in that journey to 1,000 subscribers, we would love it. That would be fantastic. And that'll do it for this week. We hope you come back and join us in another two weeks. And until next time, keep building your best life. Bye, guys. Bye.